what's going on up there doesn't scare you, you're not paying attention. Are we going to sit here and say nothing and do nothing? I know it's polluting the bay. It's killing the animals, sea mammals. It's killing you. Your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your mother. I mean, they're all going to have problems with their hearts, the respiratory system. <coughs> you gag, you cough. This should be a nice, clean day. But the stuff is coming down to infest us and infect us. Senility, that poison, that toxin that hits you every day, every hour. And it's going on, there's a war against the planet Earth. It's going on up there, it's an aerosol, a toxic dump. There's a toxic fog. No, it's not a scary movie, it's scary. It scares the organization. Santa Cruz, alert, response, emergency. It's a damn emergency. And get ready for scare two. It's coming. Oh, when you get copies, make copies. Give them away. I don't care what you do with them, except use them. See, a tool is useless unless you use it. A movie is a tool. It manufactures something in the mind that changes. There's a synapse happening and, oh, the chemical, uh, sulfur hexafluoride. It changes something in the synapse. I don't know exactly how it works in the brain, but they know. These are the Dr. Frankensteins of the world. Strontium, strontium is what they use in neuroscience. Oh, you well, there's, there's strontium. Uh, Marshall says strontium. It replaces yes. calcium in your neurotransmitters so you're easier to manipulate. He's known to be the most lucent of all writers when it comes to a description of the Federal Reserve. He tells you when it began, where it began, how it began, and how they're killing us financially. How they're financing things that are dropping from the sky. You say, well, no. I mean, that's that's natural. That That's jet trails, and we, we've seen those for years. That's not poison. They're not trying to numb us down or, or, or dumb us down. And I was sitting in front of a television the other night and I look up at the screen and it's Ed, Ed Griffin. Nobody better at investigation, nobody better than doing, well, you might say the dirty work of going behind and underneath the sheets and getting behind the curtain. G. Edward Griffin, friend the best of the best. Ed, you've produced a very disturbing picture. You've disturbed me greatly. I mean, I watch these films at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm concerned as hell that uh, you may be on to what this Illuminati is trying to, well, you may be on to the biggest crime in the century, in the two centuries in the history of the world against humanity itself. Am I overreacting when I take a look up there day after day after day in, in Santa Cruz and I hear about it in Santa Barbara? I see it off of Catalina Island with some sort of rocket going up and people say, oh, it's nothing to worry about. I hear the planes going overhead. My God, maybe they're dropping. They're doing another dump on us. Uh, and it, it's really... a uh, death dumps on a daily basis. Maybe not happening instantaneously, but what is your, am I going too far? Anthony, I don't think you're going too far at all. I think that uh, the way you've described it is uh, in terms of the greatest crime of all history, crime against humanity. I don't think that's too strong a statement at all. And the reason it's 
I think very uh, a rational statement is that we know that they are spraying something toxic on us. It's no longer any question. They always say, well, it's just water vapor, of course, but we now know it's not just water vapor. And we know that's very toxic. It's, uh, it's affecting human health. It's uh, affecting plant life, wildlife. And it could damage the ecosystem and the human race for centuries, if not forever. Some of these genetic changes that may come about in these things it could be irreversible. We don't know. Well, it could kill the, the, the sea mammals, the sea otters and the seals, the porpoises, the whales. It could kill the fish. It's poisoning the water. It's dropping the trees and making them non-functional. I mean, they're dying everywhere. And it's happening at a very rapid speed. Or am I, again, you know, I, I can exaggerate at times, you know. Well, no, I don't think you're exaggerating. And that's the reason we produced this uh, documentary, is because it's so far removed from what most people think is reality. It's shocking to discover. And for that very reason, a lot of people have this built-in resistance. They don't want to discover it because it is so far removed from their concept of reality. And they realize that if this is true, if this is true, then somebody is lying to me, somebody who I respect as an authority. Maybe uh, those in positions of power, maybe even people whom I respect, maybe those I voted for, they're lying to me. Nobody wants to admit that. So they, they have this uh, built-in mechanism that can't be true because I voted for those people. And I only vote for good people. I voted for him, therefore that's a good person. I, I, heard, the, I heard the same story once before about 911. They said, no, 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 no. This is, these are, these are Arabs. Uh, they, they hit this building and the next day, this guy looks out there, the FBI boys, and they're looking down. You know, this is molten steel down below. It's hot as hell, right? And uh, one of the FBI guys says, "What? Oh my God! That's a passport. Would you lift that? That you get, get that for me? It's a passport, and it survived all of this destruction. No, so, so it went to, it went to the heat, the flame, went through the concrete." It went through the the steel, the toilets, the electricity. It came through the building, down on the, the ground. Everything else was melted. And they said, what? Ma Muhammad Atta. Now we can just, now we know who to print it, uh, in the paper. I mean, we've got all the names. We've even got their Aunt Susie's firstborn. Oh, that was the illegitimate birth before she became legalized in the, in the community. Well, how, can they, how can they believe that? Well, you see, that's another topic. And uh, no, but I mean, isn't it the, the same similar, people? Yeah. Isn't that, it the same people who who did that who are doing this? The likelihood of that. Well, I think that is something that needs to be demonstrated. I could say what I think, but if people didn't agree with me, they'd say, "Well, prove it," and I'd like to be able to prove it. I'm talking about chemtrails right now. I can prove who's doing that. Uh, we do have the evidence. We do know who's doing it. We know why they're doing it. We know how they're doing it. I don't have to speculate on any of that. So we're talking so, about aircraft, and that's what I call it. I, I, know, I don't call it friendly stuff. It's, it's not just, oh, there's a beautiful chemtrail in the sky. It's aircraft. Yeah. It is poison. It's very poisonous to us, yeah. And the point, the point I'm trying to make here is that I think that we can get too many topics involved here to the point where uh, we lose people. You know, uh, I think one shocking topic at a time is more than enough for most well, people. What I'm, I'm saying in comparing the 911 thing, the same people who did that, I think is, the likelihood is that they're doing this. It's the same people who want to bring about a new world war. Well, I would say that the people who are behind the chemtrail issue, the spread right. of these people, it's a grouping. It's not just one single identifiable group, but it's a grouping of several groups. Follow what I mean. First of all, we know there are these insane scientists. The Malthusian madmen who the want mad to reduce the population they, of the yeah, planet. They've by got 90%. these plants. And, and they think they're going to geoengineer. Just think of that word. They're going to engineer the earth. Oh, that's like God. I think that's what God did. You see, so they think of themselves as godlike creatures. Well, they got to combat God and Mother Nature. 
but they think that they have the wisdom and the ability, and should be given the ability, to actually change nature. The way well, then it is. they so think they're, they're insane. They're, I think they're, they're insane. The, the gods of the earth, they're, yeah. they're nuts. I think Wacko. They're, I think they're insane. Now, they aren't just doing this on their own. They're funded, aren't they? Yes. Now, they get a lot of money coming in. Well, we look who's funding them. Who makes the money? Well, they're getting funded from several sources. They get a lot of money from tax exempt foundations, for example. They work in university staffs. Which Surely are not the by Rockefellers government. or something like that. Well, we know in this one case where most of the money comes from the Gates Foundation, Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that. Wait, it's it, not it, speculation. Does, doesn't he want to reduce the population of the planet? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Well, that would have to kill, they would have to kill some people. Well, I don't think he would put it that way. He, he would say, well, well we have to do is, it? well, he would say we have to reduce fertility. We don't have to kill anybody, but we have to make sure that people don't uh, procreate. You see, that's how they would put it. And they can always cover it in some way to make it sound right. The point is, all right, we've got the insane scientists, we've got the monopolistic corporations who are intending to make a lot of money on this operation. Right. I mean, companies like... You can't kill a billion people without making some money. You right? can't spray a hundred million tons of aluminum without making some money either, you see. Well, who's, who's dropping this stuff? Well, you, I know your film talks about they and I'm upset about well, that because I, I want to, we're doing this thing called air crapping, and I want to find out who these people well, are. Well, don't we all? And I can't give you their names and telephone numbers, but I know in what group uh, they work. Tell us what group. Well, they work, uh, I believe they work for a uh, contract contracting organization could possibly be uh, a front for the CIA. I know that it's transnational. It's not just one nation involved here. I think, there, in fact, we know that most of the NATO countries, if not all of them, are involved in this spring. So we know that it's international in scope. We're not even talking about governments anymore because each government, you know, might be jealous of its own skies. It has to enter into an agreement with other governments or other agencies. This is bigger than government. So we're talking about an international criminal cartel I designed think, to reduce the population of the Earth. Uh, on the Georgia Guidestones, they say 90 percent. Uh, Frank uh, Cousteau, Jack Cousteau, said, "Well, we have got to reduce the population of the planet by 350,000 per day." Something like that, yeah. Now, yeah that's, are, that's quite a few people, isn't it? It's quite a few people, but you see, we, we, can, we cannot say that that is their motive, because they will deny it. In fact, what they say their motive is, is to save us, is from, to preserve us. From Mother Nature. From, from yeah, global warming. It's global warming is a horrible thing, they say, right? So we have to re-engineer the planet. We have to put stuff in the sky to reflect the sunlight, so that you and I can live longer. That's what they say. I see people gagging and coughing. Uh, I see senility. I see, see autism going from like one in ten thousand when, when we were kids. It, you hardly ever saw anybody, you know, sort of look funny and walked around. They used to call them you know, Mongolian idiots. The people, oh God, you know, there there was a, there was a horror thing. Now we talk about the the Olympics, the the for the, the autistic kids. And it's like one in a hundred and ten? That couldn't have happened by accident. How do you think that occurred? How could that have occurred if it wasn't by design? Well, plausibly it could happen by accident, of course. I mean, the, the doctors that give uh, vaccines to kids yes. are not trying to kill those kids, are they? It's not their design to kill anybody or to give them autism. They believe what they've been told by the drug companies that these shots are good for these kids. And then we may lose one or two here, but we're going to save more than we lose. So it's a, you know, the greater good for the greater number. The drug companies are financed by the pharmaceutical companies. When you say, what is their motive? You can get into endless debate on that. And I don't think we need to get into that debate with this <coughs> chemtrail issue. Regardless of their motive, let's grant them just for the moment that they really believe that they're going to help mankind. Well, isn't that what Dr. Frankenstein did? Yeah. He created the monster? He they thought Let's, it was going to be a superior being. Let's grant them the uh, argument that they give us. They are making a mistake. Let's say, at the very best, they've made a huge mistake, and it's killing us. But Dr. Frankenstein thought he was improving the society. I think it's a good analogy. All right. Was he sincere or was he trying to, to kill people? Oh, no. In the Dr. Frankenstein time? was trying to improve society. He was sincere. All right. So we've so, got the modern day Frank, Dr. Frankensteins are trying to improve. I think that's they, a good they, analogy. They believe it. They, let's assume they believe it. That Does that mean they get off the hook? No. 
They've made a horrible mistake, and it involves our lives and those of our children and our grandchildren.